Hi, good day. We are the group 2. I am Dieter Jan Gore. I am Merit May Gretina. I am Grisea May Kambal. I am Bernilio Vergara. And we are here to discuss about how to convert CFG to GNF. So, let's start. CFG to GNF. I'm renting out content to think now why and so I drink up near one point. Now I'll drink up near one point. Example S to AB, A to BS and B, B to SA and A. This is the steps. Step 1. Check whether the given CFG is a simplified grammar. It should not have null production, unit production, or useless symbol. Step 2. Check whether a CFG is already converted into CNF. And step 3. Change the name of the non-terminal symbols to AI. Rewrite the grammar and simply replace this with AI. So, S with A1. A with A2 and B with A3 and this is the new grammar form A1 to A2, A3 and A2, A3, A1 and B then A3 to A1, A2 and A Step 4. Modify the rules so that the non-terminals are in ascending order such that if the production is the form of AI gives AJ, X then I should be always be less than J. So, and and it should never be I greater than, should never be, should never be I greater, greater than J. So, what do we mean of this? So, look at this production. Look at this production. You are taking this production, A, A1, goes to A2 and A3 is the form of AI. AI gives AJX. So here, what is our AI? So here, what is our AI here? So our AI is A1. And what is our AJ here? So our AJA is A2. So you just look the first variable and the next fall of it. So you don't have to word the things after that. So here, your i is 1 and your j is 2. So our rules state that our i is less than j, it should always be in ascending order. So let us see if this case is acceptable or not. So our ai and a2 is definitely, is definitely uh, acceptable because 1 is less than 2. And here, so the second one, a2 and our a3 still definitely uh, acceptable because 2 is less than less than 3 so it is acceptable and let us see if it if this third portion is following the rule so our a3 and a1 is is not following the rule because 3 is greater than 1 so our rule state that that our i should be less than j so here our 3 our 3 is i and our 1 is the j so 3 is greater 3 is greater than 1 so it is not acceptable so if it is not following the rule so we need to resolve the third portion we have the cases here so the case 1 is greater so our case 1 is 1 is greater than j so so we resolve it by replacing the a1 with some other value so we will rewrite the A3 here. A3 gives A1 and A2 and A. So what we will do? We will replace the A1 with some other we replace the A1 with some other value. So what the other value which I, I can replace A1? So we have A3 and A3. 
Since we have the condition where the situation is i is equal to j, it is still unknown because the steps state that it should never be greater than or equal to j. So it will never be i is, is greater than or equal to j. So we will use the case 2 which is the left recursion. Now, as you can see, this production and this variable and this variable are equal. So we will use left recursion. In left recursion, uh, left recursion occurs when when the i. So this is the this is our i i part, and j this is our j. So if the i and the j is equal, so we will use left recursion. To perform left recursion elimination, the first thing to do we must add new rule or new variable. So we will use z. In this part, this production is our left recursion. So copy this, copy this, and a1, a3, a2. So we will copy a1, a3, a2, and our left recursion part. So this one, left recursion part. We will change this variable into our new variable that we've added. So z. So a1, a3, a2, and our variable that we've changed this a3. So z, and the rest copy itself a1 a3 a2 now in a3 we will not include this production since this is our left recursion part so we will copy the rest so b b a1 a3 a2 and a and copy also itself with the new variable that we've added so z and a z so this is our new new rule z and our new a3 that we we have changed so now the grammar is a1 goes to a2 and a3 then a2 goes to a3 and a1 and b and this is our new a3 that we've changed and the new rule that we've added so a3 goes to b a1 a3 and a2 and a and b a1 a3 a2 and the new rule z and a z so this is the new rule z goes to a1 a3 a2 and z and a1 a3 a2 so step 5 bring every rule to the form a goes to ax so a is terminal and x is non-terminal which is in gnf or grayback normal form so we will solve now the final production so we must copy first the a3 since a3 is already in gnf form because the term the terminal is in the first terminal terminal and terminal so this gnf already now in a3 a3 we will replace this variable into this productions so b a1 a3 a2 so b a1 a3 a2 so this is our a3 this is our a3 and copy the rest a1 and a a1 b a1 a3 a2 z so b a1 a3 a2 z and the a1 a1 and the az az and the a1 so and copy the rest 
B. Now, we are done. A3, A2. So, already in GNA form. And A1. So, A1. So, A1 have A2. So, we are done converting this rule into GNA form. So, A2. B, A1, A3, A2, A1. So, B, A1, A3, A2, A1. This is our A2. A2. And copy A3. A1. A, A1, A, A1, A3. B, A1, A3, A2, Z, A. So, this and the A3. So, A, Z, A1 and the A3. And B and A3. So this. So it's already in GNA form. Now we are, we are almost done. The remaining is the Z, the, the, the new variable that we've added, the new rule. So this A1 and A1 also we will replace this into this productions. So the same, the same replacing. So B, A1, A3, A2, A1, A3. So this is our B, A1, A3, A2, A1, A1, and A3. So, so this is our final form into GNF, the final grammar. And as you can see, they are all they are all in GNF form because in both both productions are have terminal in first, so we are, we are done. In solving a uh, GNF, you must remember uh, follow the steps and solve it properly.